Hey everybody, welcome back to the Financial Freedom Show. My name is uh, Rob Berger. As some of you know, I live outside of Washington, D.C., worked in D.C. as a lawyer for about 25 years, worked for the government, and a lot of the folks in D.C. right now are sort of debating over whether the wealthy are paying their fair share in taxes. And so I thought I would dig into the numbers. I, I didn't know what, what percentage of uh, the, the income tax, for example, do the one percenters pay? Uh, how much do the rest of us pay? I, I wasn't sure, so I dug into the numbers and uh, quite surprising, I uh, found a lot of it fascinating. So I wanna share that with you today. Now the data comes from the IRS. I've also sprinkled in a little bit of data from the Congressional Budget Office. I will link the sources below this video so you can have access to them uh, if you want. And I've sort of boiled it all down into nine slides that I'm gonna show you, a, a presentation I put together. And again, it's just nine slides, so we're gonna move through this pretty quickly. And uh, to start with, let's kind of set a baseline. This data comes from 2018, the tax year. This was the most recent data uh, released by the IRS. And from this, we know a few things. First of all, in 2018, there were 144 million taxpayers. Uh, they reported total income of 11.6 trillion. And from that, they paid one and a half trillion in individual income taxes. Uh, now, the second thing that we kind of as a baseline that we want to keep in mind is that uh, 2018 is significant because that's the first year uh, that the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, some would refer, refer to this to the Trump tax cuts, took effect. And uh, so these were the first, uh, the first you know, uh, data that comes after that law took effect. And a couple of things to keep in mind. First of all, average tax rates from this legislation fell for everybody. Now, they didn't, they didn't all fall in equal ways. We'll take a look at that, but they fell for everybody. And the second thing is, is that total income tax fell by $65 billion when you compare 2017 to 2018. This actually surprised me. If I were guessing, I would have guessed the number would have been a lot, a lot higher, uh, but it, it wasn't. That's, that's still a lot of money, but I guess... When it comes to the federal budget, it's, it's probably, I'm sorry to say, not, not, not a lot of money today. Um, and then finally, just again as a baseline, in 2018, to qualify in the top 1% based on income, you needed an adjusted gross income of about $540,000. So with that, let's get into uh, more specifics. So what's the 1% share of income? Well, of all of the adjusted gross income, the 1% uh, in 2017 accounted for 21%. I was curious, you know, would that change in 2018? It does fluctuate significantly, uh, particularly uh, over economic cycles. From 2017 to 2018, though, not a big difference. It actually went down, but only one-tenth of 1%. 1 so that's their share of income. We'll just call it 21%. Um, and how does that then compare to their share of the federal income tax paid? Well, in 2001, I know I'm going back uh, you know, 20 years on you for just a minute, the 1% paid 33.2% of the federal income taxes. Now, what do you think that went to in 2017? Any idea, did it go up, did it go down? Well, in 2017, it, went, it, it had gone up, obviously 38.5%, uh, so about 5%. And I was curious what would happen then after the Trump tax cuts would it go up or down? And it went up 40.1%. So the 1% in 2018, they accounted for about 21% of the, of the income. They paid uh, not quite twice uh, that percent of the income taxes, 40.1%. It amounted to, as you can see, about 615 billion of the 1.5 trillion total paid in federal income tax. And just as another sort of data point, the top 0.1%, so this is really the ultra-wealthy, they paid half of that. They paid a total share of 20% of, of the income taxes, half of what the total 1%ers paid in 2018. Now, now we have to look at the share of federal income taxes paid by the bottom 50%, just to get a comparison. And in 2001, 4.9%. And uh, any ideas what happened in 2018? Given the tax cuts, because there were tax cuts in 2003, um, and, and then tax cuts since then, and then of course uh, the tax cuts that went into effect 2018 affected them. So their total share of income tax taxes paid uh, in 2018 
dipped you know, pretty significantly as compared to 2001, uh, down to 2.9%. Now, of course, this is just the inverse of that, but the top 50% of income tax filers uh, paid just over 97% of the federal income tax. Now, where things get really interesting is when we talk about the average income tax rates. Now, keep in mind, um, you know, we're not talking about marginal tax rates, the, 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 uh, the rate one pays on the last dollar of earnings, uh, their top tax bracket. We're talking about an average. So effectively, think of it as adding up, uh, taking all your, ta your income, federal income taxes and dividing by your adjusted gross income. What would that rate be? So let's take a look at it. We'll start with the 1%. And again, going back one year, in 2017, their average income tax rate, 26.8%. Now, we know it goes down. It goes down because of the, the tax cuts uh, that went into effect in, in 2018. It went down to 25.4%. Now, for the bottom 50% in 2017, their average income tax rate was 4%. And it went down as well to 3.4%. Now, one question I think worth asking is, is, is kind of why? Forget whether this is good or bad, but rather, why did we see these changes over time? You know, why does the, say, the bottom 50% pay what, what they pay versus the top 50% and, and, of course, the one percenters? And here, there's a couple of reasons. First of all, we can actually go back to the Tax Reform Act of 1986, which expanded the zero tax bracket. And then we have the, ta the child tax credit. It's sort of become... Um, I think, you know, it's just there. We kind of accept it, but it wasn't always there. And it was introduced in 1997. And when you combine these, these two things, among other things, it increased the, the folks, you know, the percentage of folks with no tax liability from 23.6% to 34.7% in 2018. And then according to the CBO, um, and this gets interesting, the bottom 20% of tax filers actually have a negative 10.9% income tax rate. And if you go to the next quintile, it's a negative 1% income tax rate. And, you know, if you're like me, when I first saw that, I'm like, is that even possible? How, how do you have a negative tax rate? Well, it, it turns out it is possible. And let me show you why. Um, and this chart kind of explains it. So what this chart shows is the total income tax minus refundable credits. So you can get, uh, you can actually not owe taxes and get money back from uh, the IRS when you qualify for refundable uh, tax credits. And the amount of refundable tax credits are growing. And in fact, um, they, they grew under President Trump and President Biden wants to expand them. Uh, so that can, um, you know, those numbers could actually go up. And so as a result, the average tax rate, um, again, this is average, there's always gonna be exceptions, but the average tax rate is actually negative for folks up until around the $40,000 uh, mark in taxable income, as you can see uh, from this chart. And then, of course, it goes up into the high 20s once you get you know, to $500,000 or more, which, again, is roughly uh, the one percenters. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind from all of this. First of all, um, we don't factor in withholding tax. We're just looking at federal income tax, which is highly progressive, meaning your tax rates go up the more you make. Withholding tax, not progressive like the, the federal income tax. We're also not factoring in state taxes, income tax, real estate tax, sales tax, and so on. And that's important too, because while some states have progressive income tax, not all do, and they're not generally as progressive um, as, as the federal income tax. So if we were to include these, um, you, would see, um, you would see the differences, they'd still be significant, for say the 1% versus the bottom 50%, but perhaps um, uh, not as significant. Um, however, I should add um, that it doesn't include assistance that goes back to folks. And if you include that, then the differences are pretty much similar to what we've walked through um, uh, in this video. Uh, keep in mind that it doesn't what we've covered doesn't include corporate tax. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is uh, that when you think about a one, the one percent folks are ultra wealthy. There's two different ways to um, sort of evaluate that. One's based on income, which is what we've done because we're looking we're looking at in income tax, and so that, that's the kind of the way you have to look at it. You also could look at it from the perspective of just total total wealth, and in, in that case, 
you know, the analysis gets a lot different. And in fact, some folks are proposing that the, the ultra wealthy pay a percentage of their wealth each and every year uh, in the form of a wealth tax. Some states are considering that. Whether that will ever pass and become law, I don't know. Again, my goal here in this video was just to give you the data so you have an understanding of who pays what when it comes to federal uh, income tax. You know, what you, how you view that and your political views, that's up to you. I'm not going to get into what I think is uh, fair. Frankly, I'm not even sure what's fair. I think everyone should pay their fair share. I'm just not sure I could tell you exactly what that is. But there's the data. I'll leave links to it below this video. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. I'll be happy to uh, help you out any way I can. Until next time, remember, the best thing money can buy is financial freedom.